Hi there, Dave and Tim here for another single malt review. Today we're out of malt territory, back into Kentucky for some proper bourbon. Mm, yes, we've broken out of the reservation once again. Got another fly-by-night bourbon review. Mm. And this time it is Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve, mm. which, well, I can really only assume is a single barrel. Mm. Um, no barrel number on it, which is a bit weird, but we'll take them at their word. Mm. It is straight Kentucky, and it is 60%, so mm. that's wonkers strong in my book. 120 proof by the other style of measurement. Mm. And just like all Knob Creek, it's nine years old, mm. which is a pretty solid strength. I understand bourbon. they're veering away from that now, and now producing un, uh, no age statement yeah. bourbon. But so the for, internet tells mm. us. Maybe that's for the domestic market, or for certain high volume markets, I don't know. Or just all that the, our market is still working through the older stock. Possibly, possibly, possibly yeah. we're playing catch up, but certainly all the Knob Creek down mm. here still says nine years old. But then it's, again, all our Elijah Craig still says 12. So either <laughs> we just haven't bought all the bourbon, um, or the smaller markets like this, they're managing to keep up We're still working through the older stock. Age. So who mm. knows? Who knows? Though, Works for us. Creek though. have always been a good way to get a age statement bourbon, which is not going to break the bank. It's that perfect balance between um, quality and availability and price mm. for a you know, a high end uh, mature bourbon. Now, uh, Jim Beam, right? It's a yes. Beam product. It's Beam whiskey, mm. uh, like a great deal of whiskey in the world. Mm. Um, so coming out of coming out of Bardstown, most likely, and Knob Creek has always sort of sat in their, I don't know if they call it the reserve range or whatever they call it. Mm. To me, it's always sat one tier below their sort of named bourbons, sort of your Booker's and your Baker's, right. which are a bit more expensive. Knob Creek has always sat there with the age statement, which I think has always been nine years old. So on mm. the older end for bourbon, really, um, I think the average age for bourbon is about seven years old still. Mm. Um, which isn't too old, really, when you're used to scotch like we are. Mm -hmm. um, this one, though, I haven't encountered before. This one is the single barrel, mm -hmm. um, and it's also 60%. So this is all, all good stuff for me, especially because it was not barely more expensive than the regular, mm -hmm. um, the regular release. So I, I snapped this one up, and um, I was in no way disappointed. This is a, really quite a phenomenal bourbon, I think. Um, we should try it at full strength, mm. um, but that's well. That way, madness lies eventually. <laughs> but um, I think it's it's got things to say at full strength. Yeah. Um, despite despite that something we've learned from strong. bourbon as opposed to scotch, bourbon is more often more readily drinkable at mm. its full cast strength, not cast strength in this case. But even still, this is stronger than most cask strength scotch. So mm. even at its brutally high percentage, you can have a smooth, sippable liquor at its straight yeah. out of the bottle. And smooth, smooth, I think is a word, smooth mm. right from the start. The first and most evident thing you get is the lack of something, which mm. is prickle. You can sh stuff the, um, shove the schnozzle straight in there, take a big old deep breath, and mm. there's no prickle whatsoever. Oh, I'm um, getting a bit of a, a bit of a harshness, a bit of, bit of sort of a menthol-y prickle. I can mm. feel some sterilization going on, but not nearly as what, much as you get from a cask strength mm. scotch. So there's... Huge, huge amounts of caramel. There's brown sugar, treacle, toffee. It's really, really, really yeah. quite dessert sweet on the nose. Hefty vanilla, and even though it's not very American, a lot of sticky date pudding. Mm. Quintessentially English dessert, but it's here in spades. Um, this would be, to me, my palate anyway, it would be too sweet. It wouldn't mm. be getting sickly, but it's... Um, counted, framed, mm. as uh, really most bourbon is, it's kind of how it works, is framed by a lot of spice, mm. which dries it out a bit and lends um, a bit of dimension to that sweetness. And there's cinnamon, a bit of mace, quite a lot of clove, really, really, it's a, I mean, I'm not saying it's not a typical bourbon, it's a very typical bourbon, but it's a really, really good typical bourbon. Yeah. It is a... Picture in the dictionary example of mm -hmm. a really, really, really good bourbon in this case. Now, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but bourbon, by law, it has to be uncolored. You can't add anything to it. Bourbon, bourbon, by law, um, has to be 51% corn mm -hmm. and it has to be aged in a new oak cask. 
the colouring I'm not sure for mm. bourbon for straight Kentucky bourbon, yeah, which, which here, this though. is, yeah. then that's certainly a stipulation. Mm. Um, there isn't a lot of bourbon that isn't straight Kentucky. Um, right. Normally, I mean, bourbon style whiskey is produced other places in the states, and it could be called bourbon if they adhered to the the barrel thing and the corn thing. But normally. Um, you know, once once you've started to break some rules, you might as well carry on. And so uh, most sort of craft producers, because there's quite a few, um, especially on the East Coast these days, um, quite a few quirky little places making what you might call, I don't know, American whiskey, American which whiskey is would quite tantamount, mm. tantamount to bourbon, but they've either decided to use different casks, used yeah. casks, different grain, different something, ingredients, different something like that, in some way. Um, rather than just make something that says bourbon, Mm. that isn't straight Kentucky bourbon. Who knows? This is most definitively straight Kentucky, so yeah. um, we can we can ascertain no colouring, chill filtration, anything like Which that. Which means that amazing dark, rich colour, more like a, a red ale than any... Um, it's certainly, certainly a healthy colour, yeah. although really there would be something deathly wrong with it if it wasn't, because mm. you have to remember these are all fresh oak casks, yeah. so they should have nothing if not lots and lots of colour yeah. um, to impart onto the whiskey. And it's got to be very close to its full cask strength. Um, I should say so, at 50, uh, 60% rather. Mm. So, um, let's, have a wee, let's, let's have a wee nip at full strength. There. Goodness, that is mm. very smooth. That is eminently drinkable at that punishingly high strength. It's sweet and smooth and full of an oily, rich oakiness. There's lashings of just freshly hewn oak in there. It's it's mm. very pleasant, very lively and active. I won't say it doesn't burn, because anything, anything that's mm. mostly alcohol is always going to burn. However, it doesn't burn the tongue. It burns mm. the throat, which is its own sort of interesting sensation. But yes. to me... It's really quite enjoyable at full strength. Mm. I will put water in, but uh, we should mention just how good it is, just sort of as yeah. it comes. You get this initial um, hit, more than a hit, it's almost a blast, mm. as they like to say, um, bourbon tasting notes, um, of this sort of rich, sweet spiciness. It's almost quite dry because of the sort of dry, fresh quality of the alcohol. Uh, then you get that sort of warmth, mm. that big sort of cinnamon fire comes up, and... My favourite part of it is just as that dies down, it's got really quite a long, savoury finish. Think almost caramel popcorn hmm. um, is what it gives to me. You have to sort of do a bit of a recirculation back through the nose, um, which uh, me coming down off a quite severe cold uh, last week, I'm only just um, just being able to do. This will certainly finish off any last uh, any last uh, germs remaining in there, but um, hmm. it really is quite stunningly good. If I was to create a slightly stretched analogy for what a sip of this is like, imagine you've just sort of taken a fresh stick of cinnamon, a vanilla pod, you chew on those a bit, fresh spicy hit, then you down a big spoonful of a rich uh, banoffee pie, and then you follow it up with a shot of a very strong, very clear vodka. Uh, it's the same kind of a progress here. There's a, some warm spiciness, then there's creamy, luscious, oily fruits, and then there's a lingering rising fireball of heat that comes back up your throat mm. and fills your sinuses and senses that's uh well yeah. it sounds like a, a hellish series of activities to actually do but <laughs> I, I, guess, I think, journey, I, I, think I, I think i get where you're mm. coming from um though i could just carry on drinking this i will mm. put a little bit of water in because i think it may it may tease apart the flavor yeah just a wee bit i won't put too much in there in terms of heat or just how raw and rough this feels it's about on par with a uh, scotch at, say, 46%, the, what is, by and large, the standard bonding strength for scotch now. In terms of that, that burn, the amount of alcohol harshness you get, this 60% bourbon is on par with a 46% scotch in terms of the, the lashing it gives your tongue with its alcohol content. Mm. So to say, it's very smooth indeed. Oh. Mm. And so, while taking away some of the punch... Adding that water, it doesn't harm it in any real way. Mm. It pulls the flavours apart so you can actually kind of zone in on what the individual components yeah. are. And it's brought out some vanilla, a little bit of cola nut for me. Oh, cola's a good one. Cola's a really good one. Mm. I was, because it's not, 
is, is almost as, as near hyperbolic as we're at risk of becoming and how mm-hmm. much we enjoy this because it, it is a stunning whiskey. Yeah. Um, it's not a hugely complex one. It's a whiskey that's good because of the because of the few things it does really, really, really well, not because it does a great many things um, at any one time. Mm. Uh, there's not, it's not a hugely complex whiskey. Uh, it's just a very, 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 very enjoyable one, mm. I suppose. Mm. Goodness, that could even cope, I think, with a wee bit more. I've probably mm. only reduced it to still over 50%. <laughs> this may be bringing it closer towards... 4340. Are you getting any perceptible cloudiness out of that by adding water? Um, I'm just just beginning to know. Bourbon doesn't have the same problem that mm. Scotch does with cloudiness because there is so much less protein in something that's predominantly corn. Oh. Um, corn is really mostly starch. It doesn't have the um, quite high amount of sort of fattiness and proteins that barley does. Barley mm. is particularly problematic. Um, ultimately, it, barley is not—it's not sort of nature's given distilling grain, except that except that it is. It's the one that makes distilling possible. It has the magical amylase enzyme, which is a, a Wikipedia hole you can go down independently. I won't explain it here. But despite having the you know despite having the possessing the the holy grail um, of that enzyme, which allows any um, fermentation to take place to begin with, uh, barley is not not really the greatest um it has a lot of byproducts at what's made what makes um scotch such a diverse and interesting and difficult medium for making drinks out of um bourbon is much more straightforward hmm. obviously you have to get your amylase enzyme from somewhere else normally in the form of about five percent malted barley in the mash bill of any other um any other bourbon it can be introduced artificially, but I don't think anyone really bothers with that anymore. May as well just throw a bit of barley in and away you go. Um, but the, the predominance of corn, with its low protein and um, good sort of clean, uncomplicated starch, means that things like clouding, much, much less of a problem. Mm. Mm. There, I think that's about as low as that wants to go. Mm. It's getting very, very almost juicy now, which is rare for a bourbon. Bourbons are almost always spicy. It's rare to get one fruity, but this one's... There's a few sort of juicy apples, mm. juicy pears in it now. Mmm. And a bit of orange as well. Very, very mm. sweet orange. This really is quite good. But when you think about it, it's... Though it's sort of positioned below the bookers and bakers tier in terms of what it really is it's no different bookers and bakers are sort of a barrel selection uh usually batched together sometimes bookers comes out with a um with an individual barrel label on it or at least it used to now and then um i think they may batch it all now they certainly batch bakers together but it's essentially a they go around and they'll pick a few of their you know favored barrels and they'll bottle them up at high strength and away you go this one being a single barrel, it's exactly the same process. Mm. I mean, we're dealing with the same bourbon here. It's come out of the same plant. It's probably come out of exactly the same warehouse as the more expensive bookers and bakers. And um, so I think you're getting quite a bit more for your money with mm. this one because this one is very, very economical compared to especially bookers. Bookers has gotten quite pricey these days as bourbons become a bit more fashionable over the last over the last 10 years but this one i think is really quite phenomenally good and so do the people at the um san francisco spirits competition mm. and the iwsc which i'm less familiar with but um gold in both of those and i mm. think deservedly deservedly so um as for what i'm going to give it it's 93 from me mm. it's a really really stellar bourbon what do you think? It is a big and well-rounded bourbon. It gets a big and well-rounded 90% from me. Mm. It is punchy. It is phenomenally strong, but yet phenomenally drinkable at that strong, um, straight out of bottle strength. So if you want to experience bourbon in one of its truest, rawest forms, then go right ahead. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's neat. It is really neat. It is mm. an iconoclastic bourbon. Yeah. It's not hugely complex. It doesn't need to be. It's not trying to be, but... What it goes for, it pulls off just magnificently. Mm. Um, this, obviously, 
if this one was entered, um, this one could be one batch of many. It may mm-hmm. already have been discontinued. Who knows? Um, I may have to go and buy out the rest of the stock of um, what was mm-hmm. in the particular liquor store that I found this one in. Um, but if you can find it, I would really, really recommend it. It's just quite a quite an astonishing whiskey for the price. Yes. So there you have it. Um, that was the Single Malt Review. We'll be right back with something um, suitably intriguing hmm. very, very soon. Slanger. <laughs>